fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Don't ever doubt it. Champions are made, not born. You can get there. For example, take the story of Wheaties champion Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals. Young Stan was willed no claim to fame, no magic way to learn the game. He had to sweat and give his all, learning to field and hit that ball. Sure, Wheaties was his breakfast call. Today they call him Stan the Man, still and always a Wheaties fan. Stan Musial has been powering up with Wheaties right along 19 years. Good for Stan, good for you. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Now watch Stan felt that ball. Hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> the Lone Ranger and Tonto as they drew rein at the edge of a silent army camp. They presented a letter of introduction to a sentry and waited until Lieutenant Colonel George A. Custer summoned them to his tent. As he returned the letter, the brilliant young officer said, During the war, General Sheridan spoke of you many times, sir. We met in the West several years ago, Colonel. When did he give you that letter? It was our pleasure to see him again a few weeks ago. Did he tell you why I'm here? Yes, sir. Todd and I came to volunteer our services to you and the men of the 7th Regiment. Thanks very much. But we have the situation well in hand. We'll ride into the valley of the Little Big Horn at daybreak. I hoped I might serve as an emissary between you and Sitting Bull. Todd and I know him well. We're all through powwowing with those Indians, mister. By tomorrow afternoon, he and his men will be our prisoners. Men, a Sioux Nation colonel. Mighty warriors. And not surrender without fight. It won't be my first Indian fight, Tonto. It uh, may be your last, Colonel. Sitting Bull is retreating. He may stop to make a stand when he reaches favorable ground. Hmm. Let him. My scouts report that he has less than 1,500 men with him. And uh, how many men are in your command, sir? More than 200. General Crook is marching south into the upper Powder River country. And General Gibbon is coming from Fort Ellis, Montana. We'll be strongly reinforced and well-armed. If the reinforcements reach you in time. <laughs> we'll need no reinforcements to handle such a small band of warriors. The Sitting Bull is a cunning and skillful fighter. He's no match for the United States Cavalry. I salute your confidence, Colonel Custer. I return the salute with a saber honorably won in battle. I have heard of that sword. I took it from a Confederate officer I defeated in a duel during the war. It's one of the finest blades ever made. There's an inscription on it. Yes, the words are Latin. Translated, they say, Draw me not without reason, sheathe me not without honor. You've made that saber famous. I've worn it in many battles. I shall wear it when I meet Sitting Bull. I wish you luck, sir, in the encounter. Thanks. And thanks for offering to assist us. You're more than welcome. Montano. Be ready. Adios. Adios. After the Lone Ranger and Tonto left the camp, they drew rain a short distance away and looked back at the moonlit tents. Who's it? Who's it? Oh, fellow. He must be here. Me think yellow hair. 
colonel make heap big mistake. I wonder how reliable his scouts are. Tonto, I'd like to know Sitting Bull's plans. Hmm, he not know anyway. Find out when he plan. We might learn a lot by scouting his camp. He must have him not let white man close to camp. If him plan, go on warpath. By darkening my skin and wearing buckskins, I could pass as an Indian. Uh, me have extra buckskin and saddlebag. I'll use them. Lone Ranger and Tonto located the Indian camp in the hills. They left Scout and Silver concealed among trees and underbrush. Then they moved cautiously toward the camp of the great chief Sitting Bull. Unknown to the Lone Ranger and Tonto, six of Sitting Bull's sentries saw them scouting the Indian camp as the two figures in buckskins crouched in the darkness, studying the painted warriors around the council fires. The sentries crept toward them soundlessly. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto started back to their concealed horses, the sentries leaped at them without warning. Two of the sentries grabbed the disguised Lone Ranger and his Indian friend, while the others knocked them unconscious. The two friends regained consciousness in a teepee near the council ring in Sitting Bull's camp. The flap of the teepee had been left open so the Indians could watch the prisoners they had tied hand and foot. Observing the activity in the village, Toto said, You sabe, uh, warriors getting ready to ride. They most likely plan to deal with us later. Ah, maybe take us to Sitting Bull after battle end. Sitting Bull has enlisted the help of other tribes. Not right. We hear many different Indian tongues. The Cheyennes are here. Cheyennes and whole Sioux Nation. And warriors of Chief Crazy Horse of Ogallala tribe. Look at the sky outside. Ah, dawn. Custer's already on his way to the little big horn with a few more than 200 men. Sick and bull. Other chiefs ride to meet him with more than 5,000 men. The soldiers won't have a chance. Warriors, leave now for little big horn. We could free ourselves to warn Custer. They try to free hands. But them tied. Pretty tight. Keep trying, Tonto. We must do our best to reach the soldiers before the Indians attack. The morning was well advanced when the Lone Ranger and Tonto finally gave up the struggle to free themselves of the leather thongs that bound them. In the silence of the deserted camp, they realized they had been forgotten by the excited children and squaws who had gone to watch from a distance the impending battle. Escape seemed impossible. Then the Lone Ranger saw a water jug on the floor of the teepee. Tonto, I wonder if there's water in that jug. Mm, me not know. I'll try to reach it. Uh, what could that do? If I pour water over the thongs around your wrists... The leather may stretch. Oh, me savvy. Maybe stretch enough to free hands. That's the idea. It's plenty hard to manage with hands tied behind back. We've got to manage it. Unless we warn him, Colonel Custer, all of his men are doomed. With great difficulty, the Lone Ranger reached the jug. Finding it full of water, he breathed a prayer as he drenched the leather. He knew that lost time might mean the difference between life and death for Lieutenant Colonel Custer and the brave men with him. But in spite of his efforts, time ran out for the ambitious young officer and the troopers of the 7th Regiment. of Sitting Bull's army had vanished, leaving behind George Armstrong Custer and more than 200 men who had fallen with him. Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein and dismounted. They examined each trooper in turn to see if any of them had survived the terrible struggle. But for the men of the 7th Regiment, the Valley of the Little Bighorn was a valley of death. As the Lone Ranger stood bareheaded beside Custer's body, Tonto murmured, Him look like him sleep. The Indians took his weapons and uniform. Me plenty glad them scalp him. Sitting Bull had too much respect for him to permit that. Who bury soldiers, Kimasafi? General Cook and General Gibbon may arrive at any moment. They'll bury their comrades. 
If them find you here, dressed as Indian, with me... In hostile country, they might shoot first and ask questions later. Not right. Well, there's nothing for us to do here. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, Scott, easy, fella. Come on, Tonto. We'll try to pick up Sitting Bull's trail. The army will go after him. Monsieur. Get him up, Scott. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Know what I've got here? Sounds like money, and it is. Matter of fact, I've got a handful of genuine foreign coins. Real money you could spend right now in faraway lands. And here's the best part. All you Wheaties fans can have this wonderful collection of foreign coins for your very own. Just listen. Wheaties is offering two different sets of foreign coins, 15 coins in each set. The international set has coins from countries like Finland and Pakistan. The mystery set has coins from places like Monaco and southern Rhodesia. Each set comes in a special coin folder with a map that shows you where the coins are used and information about that country. And each coin has been cleaned and polished. How do you get these genuine foreign coins? Well, for each set, you send us only one Wheaties box top and 25 cents. Look for the directions on the back of Wheaties special foreign coin packages now at your grocer's. Pick one up and start collecting foreign coins. to continue. Early the next morning, General John Gibbon reached the valley of the Little Bighorn at the head of a long column of cavalry. Within a matter of hours, the nearest telegraph line carried the grim news to the country. In New York City, the great showman, Phineas T. Barnum, read the account in his newspaper and sent for his partner, Bailey. Bailey, I want the guns and sword Custer carried to the Little Bighorn. For what? Part of the greatest show on earth. I can see him now. Step tight up, folks. See the famous saber and six guns carried by General Custer in his last battle. The weapons he held when he went down, fatally wounded. Uh, how much will you pay for them? Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. We'll get our money back inside of six months by charging four bits a head to look at them. Mr. Bailey left New York immediately and headed west. In the days that followed, the Lone Ranger discarded his disguise. He and Tonto traveled cautiously through hostile Indian country in search of the trail of Sitting Bull. Tonto went to the town of Clear Creek for supplies. When he rejoined his masked friend, he brought surprising news. Oh, scum. Oh, fella. Easy, scum. Easy, Kim Sabi. Yes, Tonto. Me meet Eastern feller named Bailey in town. Him want hire me, guide him to Sitting Bull. Why does he want to see the chief? Him want to buy yellow-haired colonel's gun, sword. Custer's weapons? Isn't that right. Well, is he a relative of the colonel's? No. Me here in town, him own show in East. Him want to put guns and sword and show. Oh, so that's it. Mm. Him willing to pay big price to get them. We may be able to beat him to them, Toto. If Sitting Bull will part with the weapons, we'll send them to West Point. Easy, Sitting Big Scout. Easy, Father. Come on, we'll keep after the chief. After his conversation with Toto, Mr. Bailey retired to his room in the Clear Creek Hotel to write a pessimistic report to his partner, Barnum. He was interrupted by a knock on the door. Just a minute. His caller was a cafe owner named Dill Nolan. What brings you here, Mr. Nolan? Mr. Bailey... You're after Custer's guns and saber. That's no secret. How much will you pay the man who takes you to Sitting Bull? Five hundred dollars. You've got a deal. You know where to find him? A renegade engine in the back room of my cafe will take you to him. You uh, needn't tell him you're paying five hundred dollars. He'll settle for ponies and I... Oh, uh... you'll be taken care of. I'll go back with this renegade. Lead the way to your cafe... The sooner I reach Sitting Bull's camp, the sooner I'll get Custer's gun. Mr. Bailey was on his way to Sitting Bull with Red Feather when the Lone Ranger and Tonto found the chief's camp far back in the Forbidding Hills. Sentries on duty recognized the masked man as a friend who had talked to their leader on previous occasions. They took him and Tonto directly to the chief's teepee. After greeting them, the shrewd warrior eyed the Lone Ranger quizzically. How you find this, chief? We followed your trail. Try to hide tracks so soldiers not find us. But now we move camp again. We found your trail once, great chief. It will be followed again. If soldier come after us, we fight again. 
This is one nation, the United States of America. You long-time friend to my people. We know you, friend. But heart of masked men is with cause of soldiers. We're Americans, great chief. Pledged to uphold our government. This chief does not hold that against you. Well, then perhaps you'll grant me a favor. Speak. I have heard that you have Colonel Custer's guns and sword. Give them to me. Uh, me no weapons you speak of. We were with Custer the night before he died. He showed us his saber. They're writing on blade. Me not know what it say. The words were, draw me not without reason, sheathe me not without honor. That good talk from brave soldiers. Why you want Chief Yellowhair's guns and sword? Because they belong in West Point, where other soldiers will honor and respect them. Me have weapons. What that? A white man and an Indian have drawn rein in the council ring. He look, white man named Bailey. Him tell me tell you about Kasari. Indian with him named Red Feather. Red Feather! Why you bring white men to camp? This feather wants powwow with Chief. That's right. I can Great Scott, a masked man. Masked man friend. That's right, Bailey. But how did you know my name? Toto met you in Clear Creek this afternoon. So that's it. You knew I wanted Custer's weapons, so you came to get them yourself. The weapons belong in West Point. I'll pay top price for them. I'll double whatever you've offered. Masked man not offer money. A fella named Bailey pay plenty money for guns and swords. How much him pay you to bring him here? Me, How I much? Not, him not pay anything. You bigger fool than me think. You show white man hiding place of this chief for nothing. No, no, not for nothing. He... You risk lives of people in village. For what? That may not mean harm, great chief. How much you get? Him, him pay with money to buy six ponies. Six ponies. Because of ponies you tell hiding place. May not mean to anger you. You plenty big fool, Red Feather. You traitor. Lame bear, black crow, illegal. What great chief want? Why, chief, call us. Take Red Feather. Watch them close. Yeah. We deal with them later. Me not mean harm. Mama. Me bring one man here. I, uh, I'm sorry Red Feather's in trouble. The chief is wise, Bailey. If Red Feather betrayed the hiding place to you, he'll betray it to someone else. Oh, uh, that right. All I wanted was Custer's weapons. No one gets Chief Yellowhair's guns or swords. I'll pay any price you name. This chief not sell them. We have weapons here beneath skin. The saber. I've traveled halfway across the country to get those guns and the saber. You come. Me show what we do with Yellowhair's weapons. The angry chief led the way to the rim of a canyon a short distance from the camp. The Lone Ranger, Toto, and Bailey looked into a deep gorge through which a swift river ran. Sitting Bull drew his enemy's saber from its scabbard, studied the Latin inscription on the blade, and murmured, Words say, draw not, draw me not without reason, sheathe me not without honor. No one ever draw sword again. Don't! You'll break the blade! Ah, uh, me break em cross me! Oh. Now me throw sword and scabbard into river. There goes a fortune. Chief Yellow Hair fire guns in brave fight. Guns never fire again. Me bury them with sword in river. Perhaps it's better this way. Ah. Me think spirit of yellow haired colonel be heap happy. No one else use gun or sword. Now the tradition of that blade will never be disgraced. Barnum will never believe this. Now you go in peace. Take white fella named Bailey away from village. Toto will see that he reaches town safely. Where you go? To Fort Mason. That two days ride from here. Yes. <laughs> By time you reach Fort, we be long way from this place. Adios, masked friend. Adios, great chief. I'll meet you at Fort Mason, Toto. Be savvy, Kim. Montpellier! You come with me. All right. Toto and the Easterner were some distance from Sitting Bull's camp when Bailey muttered, I don't understand it. Huh? Sitting Bull knew the masked man would put the army on his trail, but he let him leave. Sitting Bull move camp plenty quick. There's plenty place in hill where soldiers have hard time finding Indians. He could have killed us, and he wouldn't have to move. Sitting Bull not 
murder. Him, brave leader of Indian. Someday Indian, like him, fight side by side with army. You speak well of the chief. Sitting bull, my friend. And him, friend, a masked man. On the train from New York, I met a cattleman who told me about the West. He mentioned a masked man who rode a horse named Silver. Masked man's horse named Silver. The cattleman said this particular masked man used silver bullets in his guns. Isn't that right? In that case, I know who the masked man is. Ah. Wait till I tell Barnum I met the Lone Ranger. Turn in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, P.T. Barnum Goes West. Hunter Harry is a boy of five. He brings wild animals back alive. He can capture lions cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Want go power? You'll get it from Cheerios. That's right. The delicious O-shaped cereal does good things for your body when you have it every morning in a big bowl of milk. Here's why. Every spoonful of Cheerios and milk contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. So a Cheerios breakfast helps give you healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Enjoy Cheerios every breakfast. Then you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. killer named Joe Pinto broke out of prison and joined his friends in a hillside shack. Boys, I broke out of prison for two reasons. Hey, go on, Joe. Here. First, I wanted to escape the hangman. And secondly, I want to get the man who captured me. If you mean the masked man. I mean the Lone Ranger. Unexpected peril lies ahead of the masked man and his Indian friend in our next thrill-packed adventure. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyright feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>